Let's speed things up. That's likely what NASA is hoping for when it comes to Starship Flight 5. Following SpaceX, NASA has also confirmed the upcoming launch schedule. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been granted approval to deploy Starlink to the Hurricane Milton area, once again demonstrating its vital role across multiple sectors. And finally, we'll discuss Rocket Lab, which has recently been awarded NASA's Mars Sample Return contract. Let's dive into all this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It can be said that after the FAA's tough stance, the October 13th launch schedule announced by SpaceX surprised many. Why are they so confident? As I hypothesized, the launch authorization this time may have come from NASA, with the FAA being left out of the process. However, it appears that the FAA remains a key agency in this situation as they recently announced that they are reviewing the information related to the flight that SpaceX submitted in August and will allow the flight if the requirements are met. This sudden change from the FAA is indeed puzzling. While it may not be a direct impact, it means that NASA has had some indirect influence on the FAA during this process. This makes sense because, besides SpaceX, NASA is likely the agency most eager for Flight 5 to proceed. At a meeting of the National Academy's Aeronautics and Space Engineering Board on October 9th, Lori Glaze, acting Deputy Associate Administrator in NASA's Exploration Directorate, stated that NASA was really looking forward to the Starship flight and expected it to occur as early as next week. Clearly, NASA understands the importance of Starship to their Artemis project. Flight 5 will be crucial in unlocking that potential. Glaze emphasized, there's no doubt that the human landing system is the critical path for Artemis 3. Ultimately, SpaceX needs to master the processes of achieving orbit and landing the stages to progress further. Based on designs that successfully, blah, 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 that successfully reach orbit and land, SpaceX can confidently develop a Starship HLS or human landing system prototype, ready for testing and flight by late 2026. Alongside this, they will construct a refueling system to fuel the main ship for its targets, with the lunar mission being the primary focus for the Starship HLS. Building such a system is challenging, but NASA is optimistic due to SpaceX's significant strides. SpaceX has built a second tower at Starbase and another in Florida to support these efforts. Additionally, Glaze highlighted SpaceX's aim to launch a Super Heavy on Flight 5, something they originally planned for Flight 6. This will expedite progress on the road to Artemis. In conclusion, Glaze stated, We've all been watching SpaceX. They work a little differently from traditional industry. We're all keeping an eye on their progress as they continue to develop. It's encouraging that on the road to Flight 5, which has faced delays due to regulatory hurdles, NASA has sided with SpaceX. This could be a crucial factor in facilitating this flight and making subsequent flights more frequent. In response to NASA's expectations, SpaceX is also making significant preparations. After integration tests, SpaceX recently destacked two stages to install the flight termination system, otherwise known as the FTS. This step typically occurs shortly before each official flight, indicating that the launch capability is indeed high. The focus of the upcoming flight will be on SpaceX's new process of catching the Super Heavy with the Megazilla arm. Although there are many challenges, SpaceX has prepared by upgrading and testing both the rocket systems and the catching mechanism. In a meeting of the National Academy's Committee on Biological and Physical Sciences in Space, Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's Vice President for Build and Flight Reliability, expressed optimism about the upcoming capture effort. He stated, We land with a half a centimeter accuracy in the ocean, so we think we have a reasonable chance to go back to the top. All preparations for the hardware and approval process are progressing rapidly. While the FAA will ultimately be the deciding agency, SpaceX is no longer alone. They now have NASA's support. Given this situation, it's likely that the FAA's approval will be announced soon. The flight is imminent and everything seems ready. How about you? Reply, I'm ready, in the comment section to let me know that you are excited to witness the next feats from SpaceX and Starship. Then, like, share, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Next, we turn to SpaceX's significant contribution in support of those affected by Hurricane Milton. Specifically, SpaceX has received emergency temporary approval to provide space-based connectivity to T-Mobile customers in Florida who may lose cellular service due to the hurricane. 
This approval was granted by the FCC for 15 days under the Special Temporary Authority, or STA, and applies to the affected areas in Florida. SpaceX has enabled basic texting services on T-Mobile phones in regions impacted by Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene. Following similar regulatory approval granted after Helene caused cellular outages in North Carolina weeks earlier. To facilitate this, SpaceX activated 100 direct-to-smartphone satellites to deliver emergency alerts to all phones and carriers used by those affected by the hurricanes. This initiative has shown promising results with SpaceX reporting that basic texting capabilities can now be accessed by most subscribers using the T-Mobile network in North Carolina. An FCC spokesperson stated, We remain committed to helping with hurricane recovery efforts. We stand ready to do all that is necessary to return connectivity to hard-hit areas and save lives. Additionally, SpaceX is offering a free month of Starlink low-Earth orbit broadband service for areas affected by Hurricane Helene, excluding the cost of ordering and shipping the user terminal. As of October 8th, the company reported that it had delivered over 10,000 Starlink kits in response to Hurricane Helene and is now ready to support those impacted by Hurricane Milton. It is clear that SpaceX's contributions are commendable, even if they cannot completely resolve all issues. Thanks to the superior capabilities of Starlink, the critical problem of communication during natural disasters will be significantly alleviated. This technology will serve as a powerful tool for evacuation efforts before the storm and will help maintain connections and facilitate rescue operations during and after the storm, thereby reducing potential human losses. Although Starlink is not yet fully complete, it is proving its value in real-life situations. Finally, I hope that everyone in the hurricane-affected areas can navigate this difficult time and come back stronger. We look forward to continuing our journey alongside you as we follow SpaceX's development. Now let's move on to an update on NASA's Mars sample return mission and Rocket Lab's involvement. On October 7th, Rocket Lab announced that it had received a contract to study what it describes as a simplified end-to-end -end mission concept for the Mars sample return mission. This approach aims to deliver samples collected by the Perseverance rover to Earth at a fraction of the currently projected costs, which could be as high as 11 billion US dollars and several years earlier than the anticipated 2040 timeline. NASA's goal is to enhance the mission's cost effectiveness and schedule after previous assessments indicated it would be very expensive and slow. One of the tasks includes exploring alternative architectures for MSR or key elements such as the Mars Ascent Vehicle or MAV rocket, which will launch the collected samples into orbit around Mars. Seven companies were selected for this initiative and Rocket Lab was among them. The company revealed that its proposal was not part of the initial research concept created by NASA in June, but was later reviewed and selected. Peter Beck, CEO of Rocket Lab, stated, We've developed an innovative mission concept to make it happen affordably and on an accelerated schedule. Rocket Lab has been methodically implementing a strategy for cost-effective planetary science in recent years, making us uniquely suited to deliver a slow-cost rapid Mars sample return. In its proposal, Rocket Lab stated it would utilize its future rocket Neutron for the mission. The company emphasized Rocket Lab will reduce cost and schedule for MSR through a simplified mission, targeting a total to NASA of less than $2 billion. Rocket Lab will challenge the program to hit a 2028 launch window to reduce costs while minimizing risks associated with Perseverance's lifetime, resulting in the results of samples no later than September of 2033, with the potential for an earlier return in September of 2031. For the mission, Rocket Lab plans to launch two neutron rockets approximately two weeks apart. One rocket will carry an Earth Return Orbiter, or ERO, spacecraft, while the other will deliver a lander equipped with the MAV. The Perseverance rover will rendezvous with the lander, and a robotic arm will transfer samples from the rover into the MAV for launch into Mars orbit, where the ERO will collect them for their journey back to Earth. Despite the challenges, Rocket Lab's proposal is demonstrating positive signs by reducing costs and accelerating the mission timeline compared to NASA's previous plans, showcasing the advantages of the commercial private sector. The company is also currently scaling up its electron rocket program. In recent years, Rocket Lab has been one of the most active companies in the field, possibly only surpassed by SpaceX. We'll have to see if Rocket Lab's involvement leads to significant advancements in the Mars Sample Return Program. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.